Okay, so let's get going and create the project that I demonstrated with AVR and events using Atmel Start. Clicking on create new project, filtering by 817, I can see that there's a tiny 817 explain mini which happens to be what I have. Note however that I also have the option to create a new pro start project directly within Studio. File, New, Atmel Start Project, and here I get the new project screen directly within Atmel Studio. So the reason that I'm going to select the particular board is that it gives me these options of seeing the board labels um, on the pins, which just helps my referencing. So I can see where the UART is, I can see the LED, and the switch. And in the very first section here, what I'm going to do is turn on an LED. Let's call this user LED. And that's going to be a digital output. And then the switch is going to be a user button. And that's going to be a digital input. OK, so now we've got a decision of the pull configuration. Do we want to pull up resistor? And just referencing the schematic, I can see the user button. And there is a pull up resistor, so I don't need that. OK, so let's go to the dashboard and add one component. Let's add an RTC. Because after we've got the LED on when we push the button, we're going to have it toggling at a regular frequency. So I can add this component. Clicking on the RTC, I can see that we have a clock source of here. We can leave it at default. And let's set a prescaler of 32. If we do that, we can see in the clock view that the prescaler has been applied. We can see the prescaler factor there. And we can see that we now have a 1 kilohertz clock. So I'm going to enable the RTC and maybe set it to 500 milliseconds as a period, um, so it'll overflow twice a second. I'm going to use an interrupt. I've got a crop option of a compare match on overflow. So clicking here, I can see that this is the interrupt control dot overflow bit. And if I click here, immediately we get the data sheet opening and I can make my decision. So the compare match when the counter value matches a compare value, or we can have an interrupt on counter overflow. That sounds simpler, so let's just use the overflow interrupt enable, and I'll enable the interrupt. So the next thing I want to bring your attention to is that we have system drivers here. So here you can see the CPU interrupt, and here we have the bit to enable the global interrupt. So that's all I'm going to do there, um, since I have used interrupts before. It's useful to do that. Then um, we've done the basic configuration that we need, and we're going to export the project. Just want to bring your attention to how you can open in various IDEs, support in external tools, and IR Embedded Workbench is a product where we have quite an active AVR development community. So you are able to pull the project into IR. Um, for now, I'm going to start with Atmel Studio, and we're going to call this tiny 817 and I'm going to say RTC UART because I'm going to add the UART next. So I download the pack and coming into FL Studio so I'm going to drag it across Alt tab and drop it into Studio. And 817 RTC events So I want to use the driver ISR. Now here is the interrupt service routine of the interrupt we configured. And what I want to do is use pins.h to just find a function to toggle my LED. So user LED toggle level, take that function, put it into the driver ISR, and let us see if we can set a breakpoint on this function. And now we're going to debug and break. So we get into the start. I'm going to just push continue, F5. And we can see that we hit our interrupt service routine. And if I now double click to remove the breakpoint and set the program running, 
my LED is toggling at about twice a second. 